welcome to Pouts Around the House. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add an additional socket to your existing ring circuit using a spur. I'll show you two ways to do this. One, by breaking into the ring circuit cable using a junction box or connector box to add a spur to a new socket. Two, by breaking into the back of an existing socket and creating a spur to a new socket. I'll show you how to do the wiring using some basic wiring diagrams and I'll give you a practical demonstration where I show you physically how to do the wiring. And please remember that all domestic electrical work in the UK must meet the requirements of the Part P regulations. So here's a really basic diagram of a ring final circuit. You start with a consumer unit, and a ring circuit is protected by a 32 amp MCB, or miniature circuit breaker. The ring circuit is completed using 2.5 mm twin and earth cable, and we take the cable from the 32 amp MCB in the consumer unit out and into the first socket in the circuit. From there we then take it out of the socket and into the next socket in the circuit, and so on. From the final socket we return the cable back to the 32 amp MCB in the consumer unit, therefore creating a ring, hence the name a ring final circuit. So here you can see I've added two spurs, one here and one here. Now in this first method we need to locate the existing ring circuit cable, which is usually found under the floorboards or in the ceiling. We split it in two. We then add one single additional length of cable here and we join them all together using a junction box or connector blocks. We then add this additional socket to the end of the cable and that is your spur. In this method you must ensure that the junction box or connector blocks are rated at 32 amps or more. In this method we simply take an existing socket off the wall, we connect a new single length of cable into the back of that socket and we add the new additional socket to the other end of the cable. Now the important thing to remember when doing a spur is you can only do one spur from one junction box or one spur from one existing socket. So the basic principle of using a spur is all about protecting the length of cable by here and by here. 2.5mm twin earth cable is rated at 26 amps. In the UK plugged appliances are protected by a 13 amp fuse or less. If the current drawn by one of the plugged appliances exceeds 13 amps, then the 13 amp fuse will blow, and it will stop the current drawing along the cable. So the current in this cable is limited to 26 amps by virtue of the fact you can only plug in two appliances, rated at 13 amps each. Given that 2.5mm twin and earth cable is rated at 26 amps, it is therefore protected by the two fuses in these plugs. This is why it's very important to only do one spur from a junction box or one spur from an existing socket. If for example you were to add another spur here with another double socket, you could then potentially have four appliances plugged in, rated at 13 amps each, this would give a total of 52 amps. If 52 amps were drawn through this length of cable, it would be overloaded, which would be very dangerous and could cause a fire. If you wanted to safely add another spur to this side of the socket, then you could do what's known as a fuse spur, and we'd need to put a fuse switch in this length of cable by here. I'll show you how to do this in another video. Another way to safely add more sockets is just to add them to the ring circuit, by taking a length of cable out to as many sockets as you want, and then returning it back to the ring circuit. But again, I'll show you how to do this in another video. Red and black wiring in your property, you can use the following chart to convert it to the newer brown and blue wiring. So let's take the example of using a junction box. If you imagine this is your ring circuit cable here, going from one previous socket in the circuit or the consumer unit to the next socket in the circuit, we would simply cut the cable in two, we would add our new single length of cable, we would connect all the wires together with the lives in the live terminal the neutrals in the neutral terminal, and the earths in the earth terminal. This way we have continued the flow of the ring circuit, but we have added a single length of 2.5mm twin and earth cable as our spur to our new socket. This example here is exactly the same, but the illustration shows the Wago 222 connectors. Again you find your original ring circuit cable which is going up there and back down there from one socket to the next. We snip this in two. We then add the additional length of cable, which is going to be your spur to your new socket, and then we connect them all up like so, with the lives together, the neutrals together, and the earths together. If using a more modern connector block setup like this, you can then house them inside the appropriate junction box. As mentioned previously, if you're using a junction box or connector blocks like these, they need to be rated at 32 amps or more. The other end of the spur cable we've created by here, or by here, is just connected into the back of a socket like this, and you just connect the earth wire into the earth terminal, the neutral wire into the neutral terminal, and the live wire into the live terminal. 
Here we have the other method of creating a spur just by connecting into the back of an existing socket. In this setup we just remove an existing socket off the wall and turn it round and you should see something like this. If it's already attached to the existing ring circuit you'll have one cable coming in and one cable going back out and you'll find that the lives are connected to the live terminal, the neutrals to the neutral terminal and the earths to the earth terminals. Then take your new single length of cable and attach it into the appropriate terminals, taking your earth into the earth terminal, the neutral into the neutral terminal and the live into the live terminal. Then you just go out to the new socket and do exactly the same with the live to the live, the neutral to the neutral and the earth to the earth. Some sockets will have two earth terminals, don't worry about this, if you've only got one earth wire then just connect it to one of the earth terminals. If you've got two earth wires like this setup then you can connect one earth wire to each of the earth terminals. So first of all I'll show you how to create a spur using a junction box. So if we turn this around, so this is one cable coming into your socket from a previous socket or the consumer unit. Then we've got a length of cable running off and around to the next socket in the circuit and then we've got this length of cable which is off to another socket in the circuit. Now this length of cable will be the one that you need to find that's either hidden under the floorboard or in the ceiling. Now we want to break into this length of cable adding a spur using a junction box. So first of all we need to split the cable. So we've now put a break in the ring. Now we need to strip the ends of the cable. Then strip the end of the wires. Do the same to the other cable. Then get a new length of cable, which is going to be your spur. Strip both ends of the cable like we just did. Cut some earth sheath to length and place over your bare earth wires. Then you need to get your junction box or your connector blocks. In this example, I'm using the Wago 222 connectors rather than a traditional junction box. I'll take the live from one of the sockets and place it into the connector block like that. Then I'll take the live from the other socket and place it into the connector block. And then do the same with the live from the spur cable. Then you need to do exactly the same with the neutrals and the earths. So now all three cables are connected together using the connector blocks, we can now add the additional socket to the end of the spur cable. So take your additional socket and connect these wires into the corresponding terminals on the socket. So place the neutral wire into the neutral terminal and tighten up. Place the live wire into the live terminal and tighten up. And place the earth wire into one of the earth terminals and tighten up. So now by doing this we've still got the original ring circuit coming down here, up there, back down and off to the next socket. But by using these connector blocks, we've added this additional socket here, so there is now one extra socket added to your ring circuit. If you're using the Wago 222 connectors, you can house them in the Wago box junction box. And I give more specific detail on how to use the Wago connector blocks in another video. Now I'll show you how to create a spur by connecting into the back of an existing socket. So you undo the screws, take the socket off the wall, and we turn this round and have a look at the back. If this socket is part of a ring circuit, then you should have two cables coming into the back of the socket. And as seen earlier in my diagram, you should have two earth wires going into the earth terminal, two live wires going into the live terminal, and two neutrals going into the neutral terminal. So if we want to create a spur by connecting into the back of this socket, take a length of 2.5mm twin and earth cable, strip the cable like we saw earlier, and connect these wires into the corresponding terminals on the back of this socket. So first of all we need to loosen the terminals on the socket. Then taking the cable we're going to use as the spur, take the earth wire and place it into the earth terminal. And tighten up. Place the live wire into the live terminal. And tighten up. Then place the neutral wire into the neutral terminal. And tighten up. Now we need to add our additional socket to the spur in exactly the same way. Add the earth wire to the earth terminal. And tighten up. Place the live wire into the live terminal and tighten up. Place the neutral wire into the neutral terminal and tighten up. So you should now have something that looks like this. You have your original ring circuit cable coming into this socket and going back out by there. We've now added this additional spur cable going from your original socket to the new additional socket. So we've now added one extra socket to the circuit. And that's how to wire a spurred socket. For more DIY, how-to, household tips and product review, please watch my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. I've been Paz Around the House. 
Ta-ta, farewell.